Let's look at an example of a technique called implicit differentiation. Here we have a question asking us to find the slopes of some tangent lines to a curve. In this case, the curve is y squared equals x. Now, this may look a little bit unusual. You're probably used to seeing examples where y is isolated and it's written in terms of x, and that's not the case here. Uh, if you think about the graph of this curve, it's a parabola, but it opens sideways. So it's not really a function because it, there are two y values for each x value. Okay, so it, y is not a function of x. You could think of x as a function of y. But if we want to use calculus and we want to find the slope of a tangent line, for example, at a point like this, maybe this is the location of 4 comma 2, then we're used to thinking of the slopes of tangent lines as an expression like dy dx or y prime of x and then you plug in the x value in order to find the slope. Uh, now we can do that here. What we're going to do is just imagine that y is a function of x because if you think about it you could write this curve as two separate pieces, a top half y equals square root of x, and a bottom half, y equals negative square root of x. But we don't actually have to do that if we use our technique of implicit differentiation. So the idea is we imagine that this equation implies that y is a function of x, and we're going to calculate the derivative assuming that y is a function of x. So I'm making that explicit right here that y is a function of x. That's what this notation y of x means. So this quantity on the left side is equal to this quantity on the right side. That is to say these two functions are the same function. And therefore, if I take the derivatives of these two functions, the results should be the same. So if I take the derivative of the left side, y of x quantity squared, that should be the same as the derivative of the right side, x. The right side's easy. d dx of x is just 1. Now what about the left side? Well, this is a composition of functions. You have y of x inside of a function that squares it. So you can think of this as a chain rule problem. You take the derivative of the outside. You can think of the outside here as x squared. Take the derivative of that and it gives you 2x, but you plug in the inside function and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So this is exactly what we would get from using the chain rule. I'm going to write this another way. Uh, let's suppress the y of x notation. So let's go back to just writing y instead of writing y of x. And instead of y prime of x, I'm going to write dy over dx to represent the derivative. That's fairly common in these implicit differentiation problems because, well, for one thing, it makes it a little bit more clear that you're talking about the derivative. Uh, sometimes the prime can look like an exponent in these circumstances, and we don't want that confusion. Um, and it's a little bit easier to recognize all of your derivatives, dy dx, in the equation when it's more complicated than this example. Okay, so I want to find the slope, so I want to find dy dx. Let's just isolate dy dx in this equation algebraically. So I divide both sides by 2y, and this gives me a formula for the derivative. I can use this to identify the slope of a tangent line. So for example, at this point, 4, 2, my y value is 2. So the dy dx is 1 over 2 times 2, or 1 over 4. That would be the slope of this tangent line. How about at this point, the other one we were asked about, at x equals 4, y equals negative 2? Well, at that point, 
4 comma negative 2. Your y value is negative 2. And so if you plug that into the formula for the derivative we just found, it would be 1 over 2 times negative 2, giving you a slope of negative 1 fourth. And in this rough sketch, this looks approximately correct. All right, in working out that example, because it was an introduction to this idea, I used a few more steps than we normally do because I wanted to emphasize the fact that we were thinking of y as a function of x and then applying the chain rule. But the way we normally write this up is a little bit more efficient. So you start with the equation defining your curve, in this case, y squared equals x. You take the derivative of both sides of the equation. And then whenever you run into the uh, independent variable, d dx, like on the right side, uh, d dx of x is 1. That's easy. But when you run into the dependent variable, you have to remember to use the chain rule. So you can think of this as an outside function, x squared, the derivative is 2x, plug in the inside function, y, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which we'll write as dy dx. Isolate your derivative, and now you have a formula for the slope of a tangent line. Remember I said we could have broken up the curve into two separate pieces. We could have described the top half of the curve as y equals square root of x, and the bottom half of the curve as y equals negative square root of x. And then we could have taken derivatives of each of these two functions separately in order to find the slopes of tangent lines on the top half or tangent lines on the bottom half. But using implicit differentiation like this allows us to find the slope at any point on the curve, and we only have to do one calculation to get it. So that makes this a little bit more efficient. And we're going to see that it can actually be a lot more powerful in more complicated examples where you wouldn't really be able to do any sort of algebra to isolate y in terms of x to begin with. And implicit differentiation is really your best bet.